Hey, what's up guys? Um, it's Saturday today. I am sitting in the parking lot of the post office and we're trying to get some paperwork uh, sent out so we can meet a deadline next week to get this claim in. And I figured I'd go over a question that I get asked a lot and the question is, what paperwork do I need to file when recovering tax sale overages or excess proceeds or surplus funds? So, it's a good question, okay? It's a good question and a valid question. The problem is there is no one size fits all answer to that question. And what do I mean by that? Depending on the state that you're in or the county that you're in, that is going to determine what paperwork you need to use. Because here's the reality, every county and every state is different and has different protocols. And, and so if you're dealing with tax sale overages from a tax sale and you're submitting your claim to the county, you know, they may require um, certain documentation that the county next door doesn't require, okay? Um, maybe you're dealing with surplus funds from a mortgage foreclosure. If that's the case, you're probably dealing with trustees or courts. And so if you're dealing with the courts, it's good to hire an attorney or the court system may require certain actions be taken you know, servicing, you know, you have to send out copies of your claim to all interested parties. Um, and so, and if you're dealing with trustees directly, their law firm may have specific procedures or protocols in place that are different from another trustee. And so going back again to the question, what paperwork do you need? It depends, it depends where you live. Okay, and it depends whether you're working a tax sale overage or a mortgage overage. There's no one size fits all answer to that question. And so I always say at a bare minimum, you're gonna need a fee agreement in place because obviously you're gonna have to have an agreement on what your compensation is gonna be and what the client is going to get. So at a bare minimum, have a fee agreement, okay? Everything else in addition to that is gonna be determined on on where you are working the case and what type of case it is, whether it's a tax sale overage or a mortgage foreclosure, and you're gathering surplus funds from a foreclosure, okay? Um, but bare minimum, fee agreement. And again, I have an example of this in my course, and I have examples of other forms. So like today, for example, we're submitting this claim. Um, this specific county, this is a tax sale overage deal, this specific county requires their claim form. Um, they have a specific assignment form that we are using that is uh, has very specific verbiage in it. So you couldn't just use any general general assignment form for this claim. It wouldn't work unless it has the specific language that the county wants. Um, what else did they want? They wanted a original or certified copy of the deed from the prior homeowner, who is our client. Um, copies of photo ID and proof of address. So that could be either a, an original or an original copy of like a receipt, like a utility bill, gas bill, electric bill, something like that. Um, and that's what this specific county requires, okay? So, you know, and I got all the documents, you know, gathered and, and signed and submitted. And so, you know, sometimes things need to be notarized, sometimes they don't. And so again, it just depends on the county you're working in and what type of case you're working. That will determine what are the forms you need to use. Now I have examples of forms and in my course, you know, I have an example of a fee agreement. I have an example of an assignment. I have an example of power of attorneys and all that good stuff. But those are generic ex examples, okay? Make sure that you are in contact with the people who are holding the funds and getting clarity on what they require to accept and approve a claim, okay? Um, that's a big tip, It's a big tip. Here's the thing, guys. There are courses out there. There's information. I have this, all my videos that I'm putting out to you. but you're going to have to figure things out on your own as well. Um, 
um, what works in one state does not work in another state, okay? When I move into a new market to do claims, it's like starting the business over from scratch because there's different laws, different procedures. And so I, I want you to be aware that neither mine or any other course out there, no YouTube video, no Facebook group, is going to tell you 100% exactly how to do it because that's impossible because every state is different, every county is different. And so I want to put this out there so that you're aware, just because you buy a course, you know, whether it's mine or someone else's, you're still gonna have to do some work. You're gonna have to figure some things out on your own. But if you follow the principles, the principles can get you there. But, and the reason I'm, I'm stressing this is because we live in a society where it is so easy to get information. The almighty Google, I call it. You know, we can get, if we have a question, we go ask Google and we get the answer. Um, but here's the thing, guys, in business and in life, not everything, not all the answers are online. Many of the answers that you will need will need to come through experience and actually doing things, okay? Implementing, taking action. That is where the critical learning is um, because, you know, again, I, that's just where you learn the most is by doing it. That's how you learn the most is by doing it. So the courses and the, the free information online get you started um, but you need to actually do what you're learning and you will have to figure things out on your own. Okay. So that's it for today. Those are my tips. Um, hopefully that was helpful for you as far as paperwork goes. Um, again, I have examples of forms in my course and, um, if you want guidance, if you need someone, you know, to help you out, you can look, look into more with working with me. Um, check out my website, overagesyndicate.com. There's a series of videos there. And then there's also my course, overagecourse.com. So those are some other resources for you. Obviously the YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And then we have our free Facebook group as well. Um, just type in overages, excess proceeds in Facebook search bar and you'll find it. The Overage Syndicate is not the free group. That's my private mentoring group. And that, um, those members pay to be part of that group. So the, don't send a request to the Overage Syndicate unless you're part of the course. Um, but the free Facebook group is Overages, Excess Proceeds, Surplus Funds, How to Profit. So uh, that's also another resource for you guys. Um, yeah, again, hopefully this was helpful. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.